Oh. Welcome to EJ's Movie Talk. Hello. I'm Justin and this is Erin. And we are here to talk about Infinity Pool. It looks just like her. Oh my god! And then there was a single pool. Actually, there was one pool in it. They didn't get in pools a lot, They back. only got a pool one time, I think. Did they get them one time? I think when they were partying, they were in a pool at some point. Uh, this is EJ's Movie Talk real quick. Uh, we don't read reviews, we don't watch trailers, oh, we don't no. read discussions, we uh, go into the movie blind. Contra fan club. I've been waiting six years for your second book. Is it coming out soon? I'm working on it. We wrote, we wrote down our scores, one through 10, 10 being the best, one being the worst, and we're gonna talk about it and then compare. We came here looking for inspiration. <laughs> Which is a new Brandon Cronenberg film. Whoever that is. Well, let me tell you who it is real quick. It is the son of David Cronenberg, who is the 80s sci-fi cult classic director who's made movies like The Fly, mm. Dead Ringers. So nepotism. Yes, well, I'm going to get to that in a second. But do you remember <laughs> Dead Ringers? The two gynecologists, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, Eddie, yeah. or what yeah. was he called? I know what you're talking about. Benny. Now. LA. 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 I love David Cronenberg. Uh, Dead Ringers is one of my favorite. Um, also, Videodrome is one of my favorite. Do you remember Videodrome at all? Mm -hmm. Very crazy, weird, trippy uh, sci fi movies in the 80s that I'm sure all of us have watched before. This is his son, Brandon Cronenberg, and this is, I believe, is like a I'm, I'm gonna, third or fourth movie. The last one was Possessor, if you remember Possessor. It was very bloody. It was very like sci fi. It was very like edited quick and like very flashy sci-fi i really can't even think of anything to describe it better than that <laughs> it was i can see traces of this okay so clearly possessor didn't leave a mark <laughs> i'm gonna let aaron talk about the movie first uh and then i'm gonna talk about the movie and we'll do reviews uh okay i guess i'm talking about it first uh, the beginning. it was one of those movies where like you know, I thought I was with it. I thought I knew what was going on. I was wrong. It was definitely interesting, but weird. And I had a lot of questions, such as, how does this poor country have the money to clone people? How do they have the resources? Their police looks like a NASA space center to me. So yeah. that weird was choice of me settings. Up. And then I couldn't tell. Like that setting in particular, the one you're talking about when they walked yeah, into like a like, giant this is a rich red country. room. For the doubling it was like this it looked like almost like a, a space station or like a um we were on a ufo or something like a yeah. red lighted ufo so i mean it looked cool but it, it was like kind of out of nowhere yeah and then i'm like confused if like when they were doubled like which person which one? was a real one and then how long did if that i had to guess then... right now i would say every time they get doubled which this is another theme that was done in movies like um God, the Prestige uh, with Christian Bale, Christopher Nolan film, they kind of do that sort of thing where they uh, die and then another person moves on and you don't know which one it is. It's really disgusting. You could just sit there and watch it happen. The original person or the double. And if I had to guess, I would say the double is pretty clearly from what I watched, the one who makes it. So the original person does have to die for the double to live. And I say that not because it was super obvious, but I feel like there was little traits with the double that was like him smoking a cigar, him acting crazier. But I can take some blood. So essentially they're just switching to the new, they shit, like they say that the double gets all the memories from the um, you know, original person, so that they, they wouldn't essentially know if they were or were not the double. But I'm guessing, I'm guessing that they were. I don't, I honestly, that's what I thought. That's what I took away because during the first double scene where they watch him die, or he watches his own double die, he doesn't seem to be very upset about it. And also he was like smoking cigars later. It just didn't seem like, that sort of person didn't seem like somebody who had been alive long mm. enough to watch a double not and not get upset about it that's why i think it's a double i mean you might have i mean i had a shock every time he just said double I would be <laughs> <let down. laughs> 
I'm doing doubles I was, all night. I was, this is just a little girl. It was fun to root against that guy though, because I hated him. And I liked that everybody was fucking with him. I, I mean, freaking with him all the time. Yeah, um, uh, it did seem like some sort of like cruel torture sort of thing. It situation. was entertaining though. That was fun, they, yeah, I like that. They made him so unlikable to me. And like but like, I loved watching his downfall personally. It was entertaining. I, honestly, I don't feel like we knew that character enough to really hate him that much. We, from what, oh, but what, from what we can tell, only because Mia Goth, who I don't remember her character's name, is kind of torturing him in the car yeah. scene, was saying that he wrote one book, it got really bad reviews, nobody read it, and she was just kind of like making fun of his entire uh, career or whatever he thought was a career. Yeah. But I also want to say, um, I saw like a parallel between. Um, Brandon Cronenberg and what's this? What's the guy's name? In the character, the uh, Alexander Skargar's character, uh, it says that you know Brandon Cronenberg made movies, and I imagine he got really bad reviews. And I feel like this was kind of him letting that out. Was like people said he was a horrible director, a horrible writer. I guess when he like had all the ashes that packed in his backpack, that's like kind of him shedding all that and making a new movie where he can like make a name for himself without his father. <laughs> yeah, totally. Does that make sense? No, <laughs> I'm not making it. But it was, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it was fun. It was good. It was good it was enough. We didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. Uh, and, I, and I know she doesn't remember Possessor, but I remember watching it and thinking this is not that great. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was that great of a movie. Where is Infinity Pool had its merit, and I, I don't understand the ending, I couldn't tell you anything about that, but I did think it was much more entertaining than Possessor was, and I haven't seen this movie before that. So I do think he is getting better as a director, and he's still uh, young, but what, is he a nepotism baby? Yes. 100%, yeah, he's taken advantage of the fact that his father is a very famous director, and he did literally the same thing, which I'm sure a million other people would love to do, but, you know. He's they're be it's better, I guess. It was alright. Alright, let's jump to reviews. I think we talked about the movie enough. Aaron has made fun of me enough. <laughs> let's <laughs> before we have any more time for Aaron to uh cap on me, let's get our reviews. Do you would you like would you like to go first or me? I can go first. Yeah, go ahead. Probably look. be shorter, am I right? <laughs> I don't know, reviews in my other Okay. I hope you guys are enjoying this tonight. That's what we do when I reviews at 11 a.m. When you're a teacher and I've been up literally Don't worry, I'm cutting day. out everything <laughs> negative she has said about me. It's going to be three seconds of her. I'm just kidding. Narcissist? <laughs> okay, my review is a 6.5. And you can tell I'm tired because I put like... You got to hold it into the camera. I put 6.5, but for some reason I was thinking of it as time. I <laughs> put two dots. 6.50 a.m. is so what she put. I put 6.5 because although I thought it was very entertaining and it was kind of funny to me, eh, you know, the logistics aren't adding up to me. Yeah, it doesn't really... To give it... It doesn't do enough to justify its kind of weirdness. Yeah, I liked it, but, like, in order yeah. for me to rate it above a 7, I would have to understand. And for us to really relate to this main <laughs> character, whoever Alex Skarsgård, Skarsgård played, because I can't remember, we would have to really understand that character and why we want him to suffer so much, which he does. Yeah, Even I though you like said it. you enjoyed it, I just don't, I don't feel personally invested enough in the character to really go down this rabbit hole of tripping out in psychedelic sex scenes for like yeah. five minutes and uh, doubling, doubling out, doubling down, you know what I mean? Yeah, the um, dog thing, it's like, what are we doing? Like, and the, yeah, the uh, they brought the dog, Alexander Skarsgård, that he had to like fight to death. And then he's like looking at an infinity pool in the rain and it cuts to credits. I mean... Uh, am I on board the whole time? Not really, but was I uh, entertained for a lot yeah. of it? Yeah, sure, why not? So I said 6.5, because it was not bad. Yeah, which I I'll go ahead, my review point. here. Uh, seven, very close to Aaron. Uh, so uh, I, I gave it a little bit of a higher rating, because I, I, even though uh, Brandon Cronenberg is a Nepo baby, I feel like he's got some potential. And this movie was a major step up from his last one, even though I'm completely not quite sure what happened at the end of it or do I really care too much? 
Do we care? What yeah. What was the real story of Alexander Skarsgård? Skarsgård. At the end. Yeah. He seemed to just not take any of the flights back, and he just went. He back just to the stayed and on. Stayed there at the resort, looking into the sea. Infinity Pool Island. So there you have it. Seven and a six point five. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, have a great night. Have a great one. Uh, hit subscribe and smash that like button. Hell yeah. You worry they got the wrong man. Well, what did we see the TikTok where they didn't know who old Greg was and they <laughs> no, got a, like, attacked in the comments for not knowing who old Greg was? old Greg, bitch. You're useless. Yeah, I mean, come on. What are we doing?